Hey everybody, so if you're watching this video, you probably just damaged a car or you're just curious what would happen if you did. And first off, take a deep breath. It's okay, this is a super easy fix that don't stress about it. But the number one thing to do right now, don't take it back damaged. And uh, especially just in Thailand, no, if you're in a foreigner in another country, I think it's just a bad way in general that just don't take the car back damaged that what you should do, I just, I'll go into a lot more detail, but the first thing you should do is don't panic. How I fixed it, it was really easy. I just went to a shop, and a local shop, and it was the cheapest thing in the world to fix a damaged car. And uh, I'll just give you the full background story, so give you a little bit of peace of mind, everything that happened, and the mistakes I made, so you do not make them. Uh, so here it is. So I wasn't sure how long I was going to be in quarantine, so I didn't book a car in advance. But I knew if I went to her village, I'm going to need a car. It's going to be too crazy, the taxis and stuff like that. It just it made sense to get a car. So I already looked up the little budget and Hertz is there and cars are, you know, they're not too much money. They're pretty cheap and stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm sure they'll have a car available. But nope, it was like New Year's and everybody, all their cars were rented. So I freaked out and there was a car rent place that's all in Thai everything's in Thai so I asked Anuma like hey can you talk to them for me and so she did and she gave me their Facebook and we figured out how to talk to each other me in the car like I was on the plane and stuff getting ready and uh, so she they I think it was a little bit more than Hertz and budgets like ten dollars more a day but I was like okay this is last minute yes I'll rent it and uh, I think it was like thirty dollars a day to rent the car and uh, yeah so cars are still I mean $30 to rent a car I wasn't freaked out about it so I went there and I got there I was like you know I'll pay with my visa I have auto insurance already in America like I if she asked for like buying additional insurance I probably would have maybe did I've never I always feel like those are scams but I'm in a different country so why not but I get there and I'm at the airport I land and stuff like that she has a car ready and she wants the entire payment in cash and then she wanted a $90 deposit and I'm like no let's pay with visa visa and she's like no cash I was like okay this may be a really dumb mistake on my part like I already feel like this is not a wise choice but I am tired I'm exhausted I rented this island home I just want to get to it and uh I was like okay here it is and uh, she's like okay so we did a, the, the bow thing and I took the car and I just drove off and I think the biggest thing she said make sure to fill it up when you get back so here's my story what happened and the fence post probably has their version of the story but I was just minding my own business and in Thailand, you drive on the left side of the road, the steering wheel's on the left, so you know, it's a little bit hectic, but I owned it, I got out of the city, I'm now in the village area. I A post came out of nowhere, just jumped on the highway, right? A fence post, the fence posts do that in Thailand, they're crazy, they just hop over to uh, on the street and, uh, you know, I hit it. And I'm sure the fence post is gonna say, no, no, I was on the side of the road, and it just was a narrow road, and uh, I don't know. So that was my way of trying to do a dad joke right there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally my fault. So I scratched up the panel. Then I scratched up the, the thing on the uh, tire, a hubcap, the hubcap, right? Okay, yeah, there I go. It's getting late. I'm tired. Actually, it is getting close to my bedtime. But uh, so I, I scratched up the hubcap and I'm like, okay, shoot. And uh, my first reaction is like, okay, if I take this back damage, yes, even in the United States, they will charge you an arm and a leg. They'll say like, okay, well, they uh, we need to take it to the shop. They'll be in a shop for maybe a week. So we need to re uh, recover all that money. And then they'll like exaggerate the shop fees and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, they normally don't fix scratches. They just pocket your money. So all around cars around the world, it's not a good idea. And I so wish I rented with a visa. I was thinking, God, why didn't I rent with visa? Because visa will reimburse you on things too. But, you know, I ended up doing it's like, hey, you know, can we just take it to some local car shops? So uh, Numa kind of looked at it. And it's like, oh, we'll just go to this one in the town center. And like we had a call for instructions. It kind of was, it, it's crazy. There's no sign for it or anything. Uh, we get there and the guy looks that up and down. It's like, yeah, I'll fix it. And he said, uh, a thousand bots 
for the panel, a thousand for the hubcap. And I looked at it, okay, that's sixty dollars. And I was like, great, great, great. And he's like, he will be very, very fast. And uh, he didn't actually know English, but you know, it's just, we're translating. A lot of language is body language. So I was really happy. Two thousand bots, sixty dollars to fix the car. And. Um, Little did I know that it actually took four hours to do it. So a new master, they can borrow the scooter or the bicycle or motorcycle or they're, I don't know what they're all called, but, uh, yeah, again, dad jokes or something. <laughs> uh, so a uh, new got on the thing and she brought us lunch and stuff like that. So we waited about four hours and the guy sanded the car. I wish I filmed it, but you know, it's like I'm new in Thailand. I wasn't big on wanting to film stuff and I kind of was embarrassed. I damaged the car. I, I was, and, uh, cause it's the first car I damaged renting so i was like i just felt like an idiot and uh so like you know she went and got us lunch and stuff like that i was super awesome obsessed with papaya salad and we waited four hours then uh i think the last of the four hours it was just drying and it looked great but he said like let's leave the hubcap here let it dry overnight and i'll come and polish it and stuff too and i was like awesome Kim, their car looks brand new again and all for sixty dollars and i was like wow okay that was awesome and uh, I did get a, another guy told a story where he, uh, same thing in Thailand, but he said he really damaged the car, 100,000 baht, which is like $3,000 worth of damage. The guy, he returned the car and they wanted $3,000. The guy's like, you know, let me keep the car for two more days. Let me go see if I can go get it fixed. So he paid for two more days to rent it. He took it to a shop and said, hey, I have $1,000. Do you think you can fix it for $1,000? The shop guy, he said, looked around like, yeah, we can fix it. So moral of the story is never take a car back damage. Always try to take it to a shop. If you don't like the one price of the shop, I would take it to a second one and do a little bit of negotiating or saying, hey, I only have this much money. But in all countries, like, yeah, if you don't want to pay, they'll just call the police. And the foreigner, like if I, she could have you know told me like hey this is like ten thousand dollars worth of damage a week to get it fixed she could have went to the police so bringing back the car damage is really really bad and i'm at the mercy of what the person says so just never bring a car back damaged and it was a good lesson for me i'm really scared to apprehensive to rent cars again i know my biggest thing that i saw a scam i walked away from in the worst country i've been to i've been to eight countries now and uh, which is not a lot, but also kind of cool. Puerto Rico looked like the worst. Expedia was advertising cars for $1 a day. Of course, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So it's not $1 a day. They have airport fees that do not exist. The government made it clear they don't charge airport fees. There's no taxes. There's no, you, they insist you have to get the insurance, which kind of in a different country, probably a good idea. And uh, they added on and next thing you know, your car is like $70 a day in Puerto Rico. Of course, if somebody wants to correct me and say like, hey, they've had really good encounters in Puerto Rico or Thailand or United States, I just know in the United States, they would charge you an arm and a leg because they know everybody pretty much has insurance and saying, hey, this is what it is. We are going to take it away for a week in a shop and all that stuff. But again, I think most of the people who get scratches, they just pocket the money, they charge you, they pocket the money and just keep renting the car because it makes more sense that way too. So I hope this video was super, super helpful. I just, I wanted to make an informal, like, yeah, I wanted to make an educational video to help you. I didn't want anybody to stress out. Uh, I'm having the time of my life right now. I'm still, I'm in South uh, Thailand now exploring all these beautiful islands. The water, somebody I saw in a video comment said that, is it flooding there? This is actually the sea. Uh, I'm in Krabi, Krabi, I can never pronounce them right. And Futek is probably over there somewhere. So yeah, I hope that really, really helps you. Yeah, I've only been in Thailand for a little bit. I'm loving it completely. Again, I'm probably in my honeymoon stage of Thailand. Probably helped that before coming to Thailand, I didn't have a bed. I was actually, I think the month of like November, December, I was at my ex's house and sleeping in their garage. And I did have a nice little corner there and uh, yeah, just visiting family. So. It was uh, it was super good to do that, but it's so nice to have a bed in Thailand to be able to. Uh, my quality of life and living has went drastically up, and if you get my personality, if you get if you've been watching my channel too, uh, how much I just love Thailand. Uh, yeah, my personality is I need to have these adventures. I have to. And I had so much fun adventuring. So I just want to keep adventuring. I want to keep helping people. Uh, keep, you know, making some educational videos on to do stuff. Uh, 
I'm doing that because also I'm pretty confident with my life and uh, I'm only just trying to pass it along like, hey, this is how I'm living my life. And I think there's people nodding their heads like, hey, I, I like how he's living his life. I could live a life like this dude. So if you agree with that, I'll give you a high five. That's awesome too. Uh, okay, I love you. I have a ton more videos coming out. I can just make a video every single day. I know I can. It's super easy here because everything's new and exciting. All right, love you all. Bye. <laughs> On the way I vibe when I walk into the room Wind blows underneath the soles of my brand new pair of shoes I got the attention I'm on a mission No sweat in the way I step I got a fresh new attitude